Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Ashley McDowell. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. It is the Liberation Parade, and we speak with some people that are excited to make some memories. Also tonight, we welcome new citizens to the United States of America. And new locations for pop-up clinics have been released by CHCC. In sports, youth shall be served and they will be for the NMI at the Pacific Games. Stay with us, these stories and more are next. The phone you want now on the best network and a plan that gives you endless data on chat, social, and music apps. Tell your Docomo Pacific rep you want now with access. Docomo Pacific, better together. Some conditions apply. At one of Saipan's beaches, this mother lays about 100 eggs under the cover of darkness. She hides her nest as best she can and then slowly makes her way back to the ocean. The eggs hatch and the babies head for the sea where they will face a daily dose of danger. Just one in a thousand will make it to adulthood. Those that do will one day lay their own eggs. Sea turtles are protected under CNMI law. If you see one that is stranded or if you see illegal activity, call the hotline at 287-8537. Bubblegum Shrimp Company opens daily at 11 a.m. Located on Beach Road in the heart of Garapan. Hoffa Day, Tiruwami, and good evening, Commonwealth. Today is Thursday, July 4th, 2018. A public holiday and a time to celebrate independence and liberation. The highlight of the day is the traditional parade. KSPN's Bob Coldine reports. Tents started popping up at the beginning of the week for the annual 4th of July parade. All viewing spots that were available from the Department of Public Lands were reserved long before today. Some people camped out last night along the route. Others came early this morning for this most meaningful holiday. Uh, what does 4th of July mean to your family? What do you guys usually do? Oh, we come out early to see the festivities and, you know, cheer. The community come together. It's a family day. But again, we got to remember that there's a importance behind the celebration. It's not just uh, barbecues and beer, but we have to remember those who uh, fallen for our liberation. That's what it means to my family. The day has come to have extra meaning as families come together to celebrate and pay respects. What is your family tradition on 4th of July? We always celebrate it big. So we come and see all the, the teams, different kind of teams during the liberation day. So this year it's Marana Strong. We're still here. This is in, in honor of my, my son in the military. Families plan to spend all day on Beach Road, so of course, food is a necessity. Tell us about what you did to get ready for today, all the food and the time, preparation, how many people and the menu and everything. Um, well, we prepared it early this morning, and then um, like around 5. <laughs> early? Yes. You do this every year? Yes. All right, let's see what you got. All right, we got ribs, short ribs, spare ribs. And hot dogs and chicken and rice. And rice. You've got the standard local yes. barbecue. What are you cooking here today? I got ribs and pork belly for now. Yeah, how many times have you cooked this in your life? Uh, First time? A lot, a lot, a lot. Here in Saipan, we do it a lot. What do 
would your family usually do on 4th of July? Here, parade, you know, get together with the family, come here, barbecue. If, if I say 4th of July, what do you think of? 4th of uh, July, Independence Day, you know. We, 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 we kind of honor those people who are out there fighting for the country and everything. Uh, if I say 4th of July, what do you think about? I think about our independence, our freedom. And what is your family, do you have a family tradition for this day? What is it? Just coming down here, watching the parade, enjoying ourselves. <laughs> What's the best thing about the 4th of July? Everything. For the kids, it's the parade that they came to see. Yeah. Uh, she's so excited. Is she excited about the parade too? Yeah, he's bored. 4th of July, what does it mean? The Declaration of Independence. Is it something to be proud of? Yes. You want to be on TV? Yeah, you're going to be on TV. All right, when I say 4th of July, what does it mean? What do you think about? Fireworks. <laughs> Family? Um, I just think about the parade. Yeah, parade? just the parade. Is that why you're here? Yes, because yes. I'm in the parade also. <laughs> oh, what's your, per, uh, what's your, what are you in? For the rugby. Oh, rugby team. Championship. Yeah. Yeah, Champions? so it's a championship. Yeah. Oh, you were out there at Airport Field. Mm -hmm. All right. What's great about America? <laughs> rugby. <laughs> oh, what's great about rugby? Yeah, what's great rugby about is because it gives you a lot of exercise. Um, you get to interact with other people that you have you don't know, and you have fun with it. Thank you. It's the 4th of July, a day to commemorate the Declaration of Independence of the United States of America. But this day means even more to some here in Saipan, as it is the first 4th of July as a citizen of the United States. And I'm proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free. It was all smiles as 19 people became official citizens of the United States of America from the countries of South Korea, Bangladesh, Philippines, and Russia, all in time for the celebration of America's freedom, the 4th of July. Finally, in 25 years, it's a U.S. citizen now. <laughs> so it's like, yes, I'm happy now. <laughs> it feels great. It's been a while. I've been, you know, uh, I tried to apply it ever since, but then I was just, I don't have time and so busy. And tomorrow I'm going to be a driver, one of the VIP, so happy liberation day. Oh, very great. Yeah, I like that. It's long time. I tried to apply for that, but finally I get it. So I can serve the jury and I can stand because my two children special needs. So I want to work for federal with federal government. I'm very proud to be a citizen because uh, I'm here since the uh, middle part of the 80s. And I have um, six children, my children, and I have 14 grandchildren right now. I'm very proud to be an United States citizen, and um, that's what uh, my old family is uh, here, all children born here, so I'm very excited today. And one male says he was the first group of people from Bangladesh to come to the island of Saipan and feels good to finally call himself a citizen here. And I'm here since the um, middle part of the 80s, wow, that's like and I'm the first Bangladesh here. We are nine people, first Bangladesh people came from as a tourist. 1980? 85, 86, yeah. So I'm one of them that from nine people, 11 people. And I think I'm the last one to stay here now, right now. While a female from the Philippines says she married a local and felt it was time to stay here for good. So happy with my family. So I stay here for good with my family, with my grandkids too. Yeah, after nine years, I think, almost 10 years before I apply, my husband was the one pushing, hey, apply <laughs> now. It's time to stay here. Congratulations and a big welcome to the land of the free. Let the red, white, and blue wave on.
A new location has been released for the Women, Infants and Children Program pop-up clinic that are being offered this summer. According to a release from the Commonwealth Healthcare Corporation, the WIC program will travel to different villages of Saipan this summer and fall. WIC provides healthy food, nutrition education, breastfeeding guidance, and referrals to moms and children in need. The program is for anyone that is pregnant, a caregiver, or a mom with children under 5 years old. As stated before, the pop-up clinics will be held on July 9th, 10th, and 11th at Kagman Community Health Center from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. August 27th, 28th, and 29th from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. with the new location of Systems of Care Clinic in San Antonio from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. and on September 24th, 25th, and 26th at the Culberville Youth Center from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. If you are not yet a WIC participant and want to become one or want more information about the pop-up clinics, call 664 4084. You can also sign up at the WIC clinic on Navy Hill or at one of the upcoming pop-up clinics. It's getting close to that time again. Time for all those producing food, feed, and fiber to register for the 36th annual Saipan Agricultural Fair. The event will take place on July 27th at the Garapan Central Park from 8 a.m. until 2 p.m., hosted by the Saipan Agricultural Fair Association with the theme Agricultural Resiliency for today and tomorrow. Registration for exhibitions are split up into the categories of livestock, vendors, plant, youth, and entertainment. To register, contact the specific division you are interested in or call Gus Kaipat at 322-9834. Coming up, we head over to the festival grounds to find out what goes into organizing the Liberation Day Parade. Find out more after the break. Get your daily serving of 4G LTE data with IT&E's daily prepaid plans. Choose from the best priced plans in the Marianas. Get one gigabyte of data for $2.50 a day or choose a $1.50 or $2 plan. Need more data? Top up! Get 100 megabytes for $1 or one gigabyte for $10. Visit any IT&E store or call us to learn more and ask about our prepaid loyalty plan. IT&E, explore your world. Can you pick me up? I am tired. I am drowsy. Guys, I'm heading to work. Mom, you're mixing. I'll take it up to work. Junior? Yes? Bring me my medicine, please. Okay. Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. I am here with Brad Rizzola, who is the chairman for the parade committee. Brad, how is it out here today? It is great. The mayor ordered some great weather and it came on time. It's one of the few things that get to Saipan on time when they're shipped in. So we have a great day. We got a great crowd and people are setting up and it's really exciting so far. That is exciting. So what goes into putting this parade together? I'm sure a lot of work. A ton of planning and a ton of resources. Uh, the Deliberation Day Committee is uh, working crazy behind the scenes to get us to this point. And the mayor's staff is huge, especially like nobody had worked as hard for the parade from the mayor's staff as Luisi Villagomez. She is just 
the co-chair, the right-hand lady. She is the best. And then all the other folks from the mayor's office that are here working their butts off, helping me put up the signs yesterday uh, in the rain and everything. And yeah, it's a, it's a lot of work. All the planning, getting everybody together, arranging the police escorts, arranging uh, the, the slots with uh, public lands. So it's a, a lot, lot of stuff. Yeah, and we saw the mayor's office out here cleaning, and you guys have to mark off spots and yep. just organize the whole situation, right? Well, yeah, and that's that's the thing. So make it go as smooth as possible so that the folks who are volunteering their time to represent their organizations have the best experience. So we've got all their signs are marked across the street so they know exactly where they're going to stage. And we've got uh, six teams out there right now guiding people in. And we're just about ready to close off the roads for folks. So uh, they'll be in about that in. time. Yeah. So how many floats are in this parade today? Okay, so we have 14 floats. So we've got six that are non-competitive and eight people competing for the prizes. That's 3,000 for first place, 2,000 for second, 1,000 for third, and $500 for fourth place. And have you seen any of these awesome floats? Have you have they been keeping it private? What's, what is this? Oh my God, that's almost as top secret as marinades in the CNMI. So people really keep a close hold on it. And I've driven past and checked out a couple of them beforehand and they look really cool. But all of it's really gonna be on display today uh, when they start the parade. Yeah, I cannot wait to see this. And so anything else you wanna tell me about this parade going on today or to the public? Yeah, so we've got a total of uh, 46 participants uh, for, between the floats and the marchers and the vehicles, a ton of VIPs. We have Burke Waldron who actually served here during the Battle of Saipan in World War II. Wow. He's going to be wearing his uniform from World War II. And uh, we've got great representation all the way from the back, all the way up to the front. In fact, we're going to be leading off with these folks behind us, the folks from the CNMI's JRTC. Woo! That's right, we got folks from uh, Cagman High School, from Saipan Southern and MHS, and they're all here. So they're going to be leading the way for us right behind uh, the CNMI color guard. Absolutely. There's a lot, obviously, to look forward to from the marching, the floats, everything else. So I cannot wait to check out this parade. Thank you, Brad, for telling us all about it. And thanks for tuning in. And a happy 4th of July to all of you out there. Yes! <laughs> Half a day, CNMI. Here's what's making news on Guam. John Daniel Nego will spend the next 10 years behind bars for calling in a bomb threat, theft, forgery, and impersonation. As you may recall, KUM reported that he had called in a bomb threat to an elementary school to where his ex-girlfriend worked despite being ordered to stay away from her. He was found guilty of theft of a motor vehicle as a second-degree felony, forgery as a third-degree felony, and criminal impersonation back in March. April. In April, he received another conviction for terroristic conduct as a third-degree felony and two counts of attempted violation of court order as a misdemeanor. Prosecuting attorney Christine Tenorio says bomb threats are taken extremely seriously by the AG's office. The site of Guam's first Spanish church from 1681 is being excavated, uncovering colonial period remains in Humatak. Here's more. If you don't know your history, then you don't know yourself. Tyler Ogden with the Humata Community Foundation has spent his entire life in this village. He's part of a larger project by the Guam Preservation Trust, Humata Mayor's Office, and several international universities. They're working to uncover Guam's first Spanish church, the San Dionisio Church, built in 1681. When we first began and I chose the, the San Dionisio Church ruins, I actually learned way more than just it was an old church. He joins a team of local residents and archaeologists not far from the site of Magellan's Landing, chronicling the island's past. Just three years after the church was completed in construction in 1681, tomorrow's in the opposition tore it down. Guam Preservation Trust Chief Program Officer Joe Kinata says it's a living classroom that has seen vast man-made and natural changes. We collaborate with the community to look at oral histories that are connected to these sites and, and we have a really well-rounded story of, uh, of our lives. The team of researchers and architects conduct their direct archaeology throughout the day and bring their findings back to the lab, labeling and recording every artifact. It's an intricate system that leaves no stone unturned. Sandra Monton Subias from the University of Pompeo Fabra in Barcelona and her team are here for their third year. She says the impact of their research has global and local implications. This is part of um, uh, Spanish colonialism in the 17th century. It's part of modern colonialism, which was a, a process that changed the face of the world. They've also uncovered remains from a 17th century colonial burial ground, found the original tiles and paint of the building, and even the church's altar. What was once torn down by the Chamorro people in opposition is now being pieced back together for understanding. 
Stay informed 24-7 by checking out KUM.com or downloading the KUM News app available for iOS or Android. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Tomas Manglotnia. Coming up, futsal finally finishes with a flurry. It was fun while it lasted. Sorry to see you go, but that's sports. Next. want now on the best network and a plan that gives you endless data on chat, social, and music apps. Tell your Docomo Pacific rep you want now with access. Docomo Pacific, better together. Some conditions apply. deserve more. I know it's been hard. Come on, let's go for a ride. Hi, welcome to Dal Rancho. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Now this feels like home. Dial Rancho. Making lives better since 1987. Buenas sports fans. Buenos sports fans, 44 athletes are going to Samoa representing the NMI in the Pacific Games. Tennis, swimming, and va are especially young. The NMI va'a, or Outrigger Canoe Team, consists of four teenagers competing in singles. They've been paddling in the Saipan Lagoon and now will be competing internationally for the first time. I've been paddling for about like four years now. And the reason why I paddle is because it's fun and you know, like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be my first competition, international competition, so pretty excited to um, compete with the best paddlers in the world. I actually don't know how long I've been paddling, a few years. Um, and yeah, it's fun, you know. I love it. I love the sport. What are you looking forward to most in Samoa? Going up against the best, you know, seeing the competition out there, what it's really like. How do you say hello in Samoan? Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're going to have to learn. So how, how are you feeling right now uh, on the eve of your trip here? Uh, nervous, but excited. Um, what are you looking forward to the most? Uh, competing in uh, to stay out the waters with the other professional athletes from the other islands. The team is coached by Wiley veteran Jason Tarkong. Of the seven sports that the NMI is participating in, tennis is the only one where the NMI is a gold medal favorite, thanks to professional Colin Sinclair, who was born and grew up on Saipan before moving to Australia. And don't forget rising junior Carol Lee. Sophia, how do you feel about this CNMI uh, tennis team? I feel confident. I think we have a strong team. Colin Sinclair is going to carry. And Carol Lee. Oh. All right. <laughs> what about you guys? We're the backup. <laughs> Tanya Tan is the only two-sport athlete among the delegation. She's playing tennis and also running distance events and track. Likewise, the six-person swim team are all teens. Lenoski, Suzuki, who will be busy in the pool. 50 meters and the ocean. And the ocean swim. Uh, what events are you going to be competing in? Uh, the 5300, the 4IM, 50 breaths, a lot of them. 
The swim team is coached by Richard Sickle. For all these young, aspiring athletes, it's a time to expand horizons and broaden their world. Uh, what are you looking forward to most in Samoa? Meeting new people. Good luck to all the NMI athletes. The Dove Masters League ended on a Sunday at TSL Gym with a most exciting draw. Hey, it was a seesaw draw. Let's duck under the scaffolding and see what's happening inside the TSL Gym. Here's what's happening. Melanie Santos lifts a shot over the goalie into the net for Kanoa Football Club to take a 2-1 lead over Matanza FC. Did you see that? I guess not. Neither did the volleyball players enjoying their Sunday afternoon playing recreational volleyball at the other end of TSL Gym. The perfect lob to Kathy Tovis, Houston. Oh, we have liftoff. Oh, Houston, we have a crash. Amelia Quintos finds the creases. KFC is able to double their lead, but seconds later, Claire Gozon halves the MFC's deficit. She had five goals. The pass, the shot, the padded wall. Yeah, just like an insane asylum. MFC with the right idea in front of the goal, but Kanoa's defense turns into the great wall of Gualarai. Claire blocked by Kathy to Nong Aldrich. Another opportunity wasted. A swing and a miss. Claire off of Kathy Denang to anywhere except the goal. Wild and crazy action. Pinball action. Amelia sees the goalie come out. She lofts a shot that grazes a cross bar and goes in. This game was so close, so tight, so even that it ended in a 6 6 draw. Here's the wind up and the pitch. I don't believe what I. Let's roll at Gold's Gym Saipan with group exercise for every body. Total resistant exercise or TRX helps develop your core and improve strength. And Zumba toning is probably the funnest way to get fit. The Shake Cafe is a great place to stop by for meal replacement or supplements. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. Today, you could say it was as hot as the 4th of July, because it was. Today's high, 90, the heat index, 104, low 80, 80% 80 humidity. Tomorrow, partly cloudy, isolated showers, east winds, 5 miles an hour, high 90, low 79, seas calm, 2 to 4 feet. Sunrise, 551, a high tide at 823 in the morning, followed by a low tide at 350 in the afternoon. Sunset, beautiful, glorious, at 651. That is our 4th of July special. Please enjoy the rest of your holiday. Keep it safe, and we'll see you back here tomorrow night. See you tomorrow.